Welcome to this course on machine learning. In this course, we're going to be walking through, um, first of all, why machine learning. And there are many opportunities with sensors generating new data, actuators that can then take action based on our recommendations, and also algorithms, many developments in machine learning algorithms. And so as we look at this list, we have many different areas. So for example, we have you know robots doing operations and with very fine precision we have uh, self-driving vehicles that are going to transform the way we move around also self-driving uh, product transport uh, such as long-haul trucks also inspection and monitoring the way we do uh, UAVs and and navigate those to be able to look for very specific things also, the game is changing in terms of how we deliver products to people who purchase them. So let's just take a look at this self-driving vehicle with machine learning in action. Now you can see over on the right, you can see it's identifying the lanes, and you can see boxes around things that it's able to classify into things like vehicles or pedestrians. And uh, you see all of these, this information is feeding into the decisions about where to steer, how fast to uh, go, when to stop, and then the person exits the vehicle and the vehicle then finds a parking spot. Okay, so you can see it go into autonomous mode, it finds a parking spot, and then parks itself. So there are many uh, things with machine learning just in this video alone, and there's a lot of exciting things that are happening right now in machine learning and this course is really going to help you teach you some of the foundational principles the algorithms and and also how to apply those with many case studies okay so what enables machine learning there's increase in data availability also competing hardware and also improvements to the algorithms and optimizers so all of these have changed in the last 10 years to enable this intersection of data science and processing and decision making that we call machine learning. So let's talk about data availability. That car that you saw that might be generating like 25 gigabytes per hour of data. You, a wind farm generates maybe 150,000 data points every second and a turbine engine 51,000 gigabytes per hour. Now there are also new architectures uh, for computing like cloud computing and edge computing where it gives you access to new capabilities to train and deploy models also connected networks uh, we look at some of the developments in wireless networks and higher speed to be able to read and then process those in the cloud so let's talk about advances in computing hardware we have CPUs and this is a performance per watt graph and so it shows that CPU is 1 and GPU is 2.9 times more efficient in terms of performance per watt and then we look at other architectures like TPU or tensor processing units for retrieval of those machine learned models and that's 83 times higher than a CPU and as we look forward there are going to be others as well uh, even with some of the new developments with ARM architectures and others and integrating CPU, GPU, and neural processing units together. Um, you know, all of those are, have just really accelerated the advancements in what we can do with computing. And even future with quantum computing, it's really at its infancy right now, but uh, it's going to open up the door to new types of computing architectures that are, gonna that are going to enable additional applications. So in this course, we also want to not ignore some of the things that we bring to the table, like physics-based understanding of uh, a process. And so this is an example that I've worked in, which is drilling. And on the left, you see a, a mathematical model. This is just a representation of it, but it might be thousands or hundreds of thousands of equations that relate things that you can change to resulting outcomes that you want. And then on the right, it represents uh, the not only the models, but also the data that you get. And for example, with um, a long string or embedded sensors into the string that you can measure real time. So we want to put those together 
And this is an example of a drilling application where you're drilling, you can see some virtual measurements, but then you also have other measurements that are coming uh, from the actual physical device. So in this case, we have a digital twin where it runs in parallel to the actual process and it gives us additional insights. So we can use machine learning in many ways. We can use it like an advisory system. We can use it for full automation uh, to be able to implement those decisions. And also we, we have these physics-based models, physics-based understanding. And so we're going to, in this class, it's unique from others, is that we're going to be applying engineering principles to solve the problems, uh, both giving our insight, but also um, even training the algorithms. And ways that we train them, we're going to show how to, how to embed some of this knowledge that you bring to the application into the machine learning and also interpreting the results. So let's go to this uh, website, uh, playground.tensorflow.org, and let's just review some of the ways that um, we can do machine learning. This is a nice just uh, visualization of uh, machine learning just through a web browser. Okay, so I'm going to bring over here just this playground.tensorflow.org, and let's just start with uh, one hidden layer and one neuron and only select one input. And you can see here we're doing to be doing a classification problem. And this is trying to distinguish between the blue dots and the orange dots. Now orange dots are negative one and blue dots are equal to one. And so we're gonna try to train. If you hit this play button right here, we're gonna see how well we're fitting right here. We with this input uh, and you can see the neuron so it made a kind of a dividing line right here to say all of these should be orange and all of these should be blue. But we didn't do a very good job fitting uh, just with one neuron. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, we can show the test data as well right here. As we have training and tests, we work on the training, but then we evaluate it on the test. Um, so let's just add another neuron right here. Okay, and just see how well we can do. All right, and now we have two boundaries here, one right here and one right here. So all of these are misclassified. It says it's blue, but they're really orange. Okay, and then we can continue to improve this further. Let's add another input in this case. So we needed another uh, measurement that we added. All right, and let's go ahead and train this now. And we can see this doing just a little bit better. It, it didn't misclassify these down here, but it's still misclassifying these right here. Okay, and here are the individual neurons that we're training. So this is really trying to distinguish between two different things. Let's say you had, for example, cats and pictures of cats and dogs. Now, these might be pictures of dogs, and these might be pictures of cats. And you're trying to train the machine learning to understand the difference between those two. So your input features might be something like nose length and ear length, for example. Okay, and just with nose length, you see you didn't do a very good job, but with nose length and ear length and two neurons, we're doing a better job at distinguishing these. But let's add some additional neurons here. Okay, now we can see, you know, with the blue shading, that's what we've learned. And so we've been able to distinguish now between dogs and cats. Okay, dogs being on the inner and cats being on the outer. And you can see that this neuron didn't contribute very much to the overall classification. So maybe we can just eliminate that. Maybe it only takes three neurons uh, to do this. And you can see that now all of them are contributing fairly equally well. You have the different pieces that then you're summing together to come up with uh, this region right here. So these kind of form three lines. Okay, you can see the vertical kind of at a 45 degree angle, and another 45 degree angle. So those individually form the boundaries that then we put together into the final output. All right, so, so that's just an example with 
you know, the, a simple classification problem. And there are others there as well that you can use and try to fit these. Okay, and like this, it doesn't take very much. But something more complicated like this, you may need to add additional layers. So we need to add additional layers. We call that deep learning. Okay, and then train. And then let's just see how well we're doing on the test and the loss function. Okay, now we can also add different activation functions. We'll be learning about these in the course. Rectified linear, hyperbolic tangent, sigmoid, linear. And all of these can be you know, different layers. We can mix and match the different types in our neural network. Okay, so this was maybe insufficient right here. Let me add a few more, increase the number of neurons, and start training it again. So you can see that as you start adding these, uh, you know, the training is going to slow down. You're going to have more parameters, more potential for extrapolation error, and all of those issues that come with, uh, with training. Okay, I'm going to switch this over to rectified linear unit. I think I need some more neurons here. Okay, and this is just an example where you can try out different architectures and see how well you're doing at fitting. And you can see it's starting to learn. This is much more complicated here. Okay, and you can see it's, uh, but it's still continuing to decrease. Okay, we have some misclassification right here. And misclassification here. Okay, but overall it's doing a much better job of fitting. And then you can see sometimes if you continue for too long, you can get overtraining where these are going to go back up again. Okay, so these are all concepts that we're going to learn in the course. I just want to give you a quick introduction to classification. And then we can also switch to uh, something called regression. Okay, and regression is not just ones and zeros. There's going to be continuous values between uh, a range. In this case, we have negative 1 to 1 again. So let's just start with something simple. Again, we have our first data set. And if we switch back to hyperbolic tangent and train it again, then you can see our loss function. We have a perfect fit now. Okay, we ha see that we go from negative 1 to positive 1 just with these four, four neurons. And if we train it again, again, perfect fit. Let's just go with one neuron, or sorry, one input feature. And you can see that we haven't quite achieved the accuracy we needed. Okay, so we might need two inputs, for example. All right, so j this is an example of regression. So instead of ones and zeros or individual discrete values that we're trying to predict, we're trying to predict a range of values. Um, and so the, the output or the labels, those are not just discrete discrete uh, items, but they are uh, continuous values. Okay, let's go back to the presentation, just review a little bit more about, um, okay, about the course. Uh, so in the course, we are going to be doing classification, regression, We'll also be doing uh, some time series forecasting, computer vision. It's really based on theory and case studies. So learning a little bit about the theory, uh, but just enough to give you insight in terms of what's happening underneath the hood in the black box of machine learning, but then applying this to many case studies. And what we want to do is, is uh, get beyond kind of the uh, visualization and understanding of the data to higher levels of understanding, uh, such as forecasting. What if these trends continue? Predictive modeling, what's going to happen next? And at the highest level is optimization. What can we do with these models to make decisions that we can then implement and have that happen automatically in an optimized way? So we're going to be using the temperature control lab for the homework one, this is going to be Python with TC Lab. It really starts you from almost no understanding of programming or Python uh, to get you up to speed in 12 modules plus a final project. 
And then we're going to be going on to data science with the TC lab. So many hands-on experiences with the temperature control lab. There's also going to be a reading each week that we're going to read and then discuss as a class. So how to be successful in this course. You want to come prepared each day for the in-class activities. Also, do the reading quizzes that are due each Wednesday. Also, there are homework assignments that are due each week on Fridays. There's teaching assistant support and also office hours. I'll be glad to help you. One of the most important things with uh, machine learning is really to just put yourself out there, start reading, exploring, downloading, and developing your own project idea. And one of the things with this course is going to be the project at the end. So after we cover all of the, the case studies and in-class activities and reading, you're going to have about one-third of the course to develop your own project idea. But I want you to start thinking about that right now. What are some applications that you'd be interested in? And start looking for data sets on Kaggle. Uh, look for other resources where you could start and get others' idea on that project. And then that'll be a good springboard for you to really start developing your own idea. And one of the best ways to learn is really just to do your own project. And so with this course, we're going to make that a big uh, focus to help you explore things that you're interested in. I hope you enjoy this course and look forward to working with you uh, throughout.